it's a pre-recorded episode yeah. sorry about this but i have work on our usual recording time so that's why this is happening so hey everybody welcome to to escape reality star wars talk pre-recorded yep. um this week we're... it's been a while since we've done this yeah it's been a, it's been a minute actually yeah um and then next week we'll be taking a break we'll talk about that yeah. later um so we'll actually have two weeks to yep. prep for the material we're gonna be talking about which is good because we're gonna be talking about two things mm -hmm. as it turns out uh yeah. and i've already sent you one of them yes i haven't uh, read it yet no i haven't I, either. like looked at the cover page and i was like okay i'll get to this later but as for this week we are talking uh the visions one shot mm -hmm. that just came out we're returning to my favorite part of star wars which isn't technically a part of star wars i mean it's part of star wars it's I, a part I, of it it's just not part of canon it's not star part wars. of canon but yeah. it's a very fun one yeah visions is fun visions is always fun to mm. go back to and you specifically like the ronin verse yes. i like it um i like it because i like my old samurai you like your grim <laughs> i like grim although he doesn't grim is, he doesn't grim have as a, big of a jaw like yeah i've noticed that his jaw like since it's even further back and we'll yeah. talk about that i imagine like the like, jaw is not as like pronounced. Him, like pronounced and like filled with metallics as yeah. it is later even He's by just, the time of the short that is just a later model of jaw prosthesis yeah um but yeah we'll, we'll get into that comic in a mm. bit um first we like to normally just talk about what yeah. we've been up to for this week um we'll start with you yeah uh so before we were recording we were talking like about acquisitions and other games that we're in yeah the dnd stuff one of the things i was thinking about is like uh there are certain moments during downtime or like in critical situations that will reveal a lot about characters and that's why i enjoy downtime because yeah. downtime is usually your heavy rp moments mm -hmm. like <laughs> like for example uh slight spoilers for the last week's grim hollow game if that's all right or do you want to uh yeah we'll go ahead and we'll say spoiler warning yeah um so big spoiler warning for the last game of grim hollow that we played um which by this point yeah would be last week's mm -hmm. because not yesterday's as of when this episode comes out which is tomorrow for us yep pre-recorded <laughs> yep it's pre-recorded uh, um if you want to watch the, the full episode with context for what he's about to talk about because i'm i'm assuming you're not going to provide too much context for the sake of yeah um if you want context check out our patreon because the the full episodes are there uh before they hit youtube so okay spoiler yeah. warning out and okay. the heads up for context is out so after that little scuffle in the woods right boom laxnor both uh they check out the bodies right mm -hmm. and it's one of those things where i'm like i know andrew andrew's on like a tight schedule kind of yeah just because of his sleep schedule mm -hmm. and when he has to go to work but it's also a very funny like not funny but a good character moment in that when the group is searching the bodies tanachi doesn't search the bodies because he's like i don't care i don't need it laxnor searches the bodies because it's like why not maybe they'll have something useful on it yeah i feel like laxnor is very much a uh a uh what's it called um when you when you hoarder i feel mm -hmm. like he's a bit of a hoarder yeah and then you have boone boone is searching the bodies as well one to see if there's anything useful but also like why did seven people decide to fucking jump us eight in people the, eight people decide to jump us in the woods sorry i got a little bit confused because one of them went down very quickly yeah uh but also like humi and boone are the only two characters that are like okay we know what this is let's just go and do like a little funeral for them and kind of Where, investigate also yeah. yeah so that's what and that does like it's like oh it shows the differences between y'all as characters even well even as players yeah. but more so as characters because like you might play one character differently than another mm -hmm. um but like as characters it definitely shows the differences because like tanachi's just disinterested or is tired yeah. all the time that's very much a tanachi trait but that's also because it's a drew trait mm -hmm. um and then we've got laxnor who's interested but not because he cares about what it is yeah. specifically well it's less that he doesn't care it's more that he doesn't 100 percent put the pieces together yeah. all the time 
Uh, and if he does, he thinks it may not be real because of how his Lex character works. like the grandpa we took out of the retirement home. <laughs> uh, and then, like, Boone and Humey are generally more the, like, ones trying to, like, figure things out. But Humey is also still kind of on the same scale of Laxnor of being mm. kind of funny at times. Yeah. And so that's kind of, like, because Humey, I think whenever something serious happens, tries to distract from that seriousness. Mm. And I think that's a direct, I think that's a purposeful thing that mm. that chris as a player is doing I, I think that's something he's intentionally doing uh for humi as a character especially as i'm talking more and more with chris about yeah. humi as a character and we're finding out more and more about his character uh which is like two weeks ago we learned yeah. or two sessions ago we learned something yeah and so and it puts things in a different like perspective because certain people wouldn't travel with each other <laughs> but because of the circumstances, they do. Yeah. And it also makes sense that Humi, that Humi's with this group because of, mm-hmm. while, yes, his background would argue that he shouldn't, there are parts of his background that it makes sense, and it's yes. like, okay, that's why he's with the rest of the group. And so, I, I like that stuff, too. I mm-hmm. And I think with what's, and because I already revealed what the big thing that's going on with acquisitions before we mm-hmm. go, because... Part of the reason we're pre-recording is because of the schedule thing, but also, like, my schedule's about to get more complicated in that I'm about to take three months off on most things yep. that are weekend-related, including this podcast, which means be prepared for more pre-recorded episodes. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, we'll probably end up, like, maybe if we, like, for certain things, we might just pre-record a couple episodes ahead of time just because... Mm. Like, with the comics, we can fly through those and just be yeah. like, okay, that, that that's an episode, and then record the next episode, because... But, yeah. And so, uh, because of that, I'm also having to take a break from all my D&D games mm-hmm. uh, entirely. Like, there is no way to schedule those, whereas with this, we can still kind of yeah. make this work. This can, we since we normally do it live, we can just pick a different day to, and pre-record, and we'll be fine. And it will still be up on the Saturday that it would have been. Um, but with my D&D games, they are very specific days that work um, for those games. Um, and it doesn't help that I'm working on a third game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so all three of those are kind of on complete, utter pause. So I can work on the thing I got to work on for three months. And so acquisition specifically, we just finished their, like their their arc that they were on Mm -hmm. before i go on this hiatus and i posted on tiktok as well as youtube shorts and all my other places where i show shorts what happened at the end which is they all got separated uh the context for how that happened once again you can watch the full episode on patreon already and find out how this happened but they all got separated all across the forgotten realms (laughs) <laughs> um and then of course they're mad at me they're like and this is where you're leaving us for three months yeah enjoy that mid-season break <laughs> and it's even funnier because is it dramatic enough for you and it's even funnier because they just got this pet owlbear mm. who also is separated from them now again which of course they joke they're like so this is how you get rid of the owlbear from us because <laughs> <laughs> they were like there's no way he's gonna let us keep this I might let him keep it. I, I have an idea of stories for wh- how that uh, the Albert story goes. Um, but the other opera, like, so the them getting separated is to create a couple of things that I've explained to them. I, and I can explain to you guys, I need a time jump in the show. And so we already, if you are watching the show, you already know that we did a major time jump. We did a, a, mm. a year and a half time jump or something yeah. like that already. And I, like, we just did time skip, tell me what you did during the year, which is is useful depending on the time jump, right? It, it depends on the story you're telling and how important, like, specific events in that time period are, right? And so I gave them that last time. But this time, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do something a little, little different, kind of, you know, give them a chance to play it out. Because I didn't, since we had literally just did that, like, we had literally just did time jump, this last story arc that they just finished and now my my hiatus right Mm. so it would have been time jump story arc 
time jump. And so that I didn't want to do that to them. I wanted to kind of let them play things out. Yeah. Especially since some major stuff is going on in their stories that you and I talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and you can watch, once again, you can watch the episode to see those major events that have happened since. And so there are major events that have happened that I'm like, I kind of want to dig into those major events more and see like where that takes us. And then uh, even though I randomized the locations that they ended up at, the locations they ended up are perfect for storytelling. Like they are perfect for like where they're at in their story arcs. And so I can kind of dig into that, that RP more and see like we're talking about with like their characters and see, like learn more about them as characters. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be something that my players in acquisitions really enjoy. They really enjoy a good, like moment, even in uh, combat that I liked Tanachi has a tendency to go full, like, executioner on enemies in the middle of a fight. Yeah. Because <laughs> you can learn about characters even in combat. Yeah. Because while, while, yeah, I love the RP, that, that might be my favorite part of mm. D&D is, like, the actual, like, uh, I shouldn't say RP because it's all RP. Yeah. Um, what's the correct word I'm looking for? The the social interaction side. Mm-hmm. That's my favorite part of d and I love the social interactions. And I think if anybody who watches my games or plays in my games, I think you've yeah. noticed that. I think well, for me, it's a mix of both. But I like I like both. Although I tend to focus a little bit on fighting, so that I can. It's one of those things where, like, <laughs> the other day, uh, me and Kiari, we were doing his game, and I, <laughs> in one of the moments that we had during that, is me telling Sarah, another one of the players. Oh, don't worry about me. I always have a plan. And she responds with, Yeah, but I've seen you get... Apologies. Oh, no, you're good. I didn't even... I've seen you nearly get crippled and almost die, like, a hundred times over. And I go, Yeah, but I've never stayed dead, have I? (laughs) But, yeah, I mean... Because, like, I always go in with an absurd amount of confidence. Yeah. And I usually try to still provide that combat mm-hmm. experience because I know not all my players are specifically wanting yeah. just the social interaction. Honestly, if I could get away with it, I would do a social interaction campaign. Yeah. But to me, because I think there's a lot of fun dialogue there, and character there moments. There is fun. Like it can be very. But like you're pointing out, combat is just as important mm-hmm. to like to like these the, these character moments and revealing yeah. like how a character works because you'll see. Oh, is this character a little bit more sociopathic in their combat, yeah. or are they more like? Do they actually try to like pull, like, kind of pull their punches a bit? Mm. And that that automatically tells you about a character alone. Yeah. Like Laxnor, he likes setting things on fire. He's got a little 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 pyromania in that guy. <laughs> like Humi, Humi is strong as fuck, and he tends to be the defender he, too. Yeah, and he's also incredibly. Humi is the most, air quotes, honorable combatant of the party. Yeah. <laughs> Boone is definitely, I would argue, from what I've seen, he's the most, like, done with it. Like, he's and you like, get... And I think, I think that... Because that's a change that happened between arcs. Because in our first arc, which is not, unfortunately, available mm-hmm. for, for audiences to watch because of the great hard drive fall yep. of 2023. The great hard drive massacre. <laughs> um... Because of the great hard drive fall, we don't have that content. But mm. I can tell you, Boone was a lot different. Yeah, Boone was was a little bit more of somebody who would pull his punches when necessary, depending on the fight. Depending yeah. on the fight, I'd say with somebody like Vieri, no, yeah. no, no punches no, were pulled because that fight was pretty intense. Like even at the end, before uh, Mouse got axed. Yeah, like. I think almost everyone but uh, but Humi, I think I think almost everybody else was down when it's a case of like, okay, holding back time is no longer an option. Yeah. But we can see like but like now it's <laughs> Yeah, now it's now it's almost never holding back for Boone. Yeah. And we can see that change in the episodes out, so I can talk about this. Mm. The first episode of the Facets of Darkness arc when we do that time jump for a year, we go from a boon because we developed that character mm. together. We talked about okay, where is Boone ending up at this point? He goes from 
younger Wolverine to an angry Logan by like I think that's yeah. a fitting because we we discussed that that's kind of yeah. the arc that we kind of pointed that's like that was the comparison we made I when do, developing I it I do like I do like the Wolverine that. you like that old man Wolverine yeah. though which is definitely where Boone is Boone is old man Wolverine except without the age because Boone yeah. is still pretty young relatively yeah. speaking Boone is I think slightly younger than you are yeah he's like in his late 20s yeah. so however Boone's life is fucked yeah, and so because of everything that's happened, that changed narratively, yeah. and we see the character development through the combat. However, so far, Boone is also the only person who I think has tried to get enemies to, like, walk away. Yeah, you usually give a... You do the, the movie scene of, alright, do we want to actually do this or not? Yeah. And, like, give it, like... It's the king. It's the Kingsman scene, mm. where you're in the, they're in the bar, and... Fucking... Alright, you... Make, make it the man, man. <laughs> and you're just like you have your opportunity to leave now before i lock this door yep <laughs> and even then and like yeah. it's one of the things where like a boon will dispatch one enemy and then he'll ask them again, again. and if there is still there and i'll usually roll to decide because yeah. i'm like because because that, that will affect yeah. if because that's another thing i think certain like I think a lot of DMs, like, within the, the wider community are good at this, but newer DMs, this is a little tip. Your enemies don't have to keep fighting if they're the losing. Yeah. Let your enemies run away. It, it creates great story moments for later. Mm -hmm. Because you, if they are enemies that run away, and if, especially if they're bigger enemies, then that makes a character moment for that bigger enemy to where they can show up later. And yeah. so it can create rivalries, and that can be fun. I don't think we've let anyone get away. <laughs> no. Uh, well, no, because they stay... I think they did stay and fight that, that, that fight in the bar. No, they oh, ran. No, they, they ran, ran away. They ran away. Y'all let them get away. We let them get away. I think we got into a fight with a different faction later. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, you did let them get away. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so a little bit of D&D &D tangent mm -hmm. along with what we've been up to. Uh, you mentioned, though, uh, Elden Ring while we're finishing up our, yeah. what we've been up to. You mentioned Elden Ring off camera, and that was why I was like, oh, well, we should just get going so you can tell that story. Mm. And yeah. so... So, <laughs> I, I like Elden Ring a lot. I thought that was where you were going to go with it, and then you were like, mm. Grim Hollow. <laughs> Grim Hollow. Uh, <laughs> but, so one of the things that I'll do is sometimes I will see if I can make... Uh, I get, I'm going to keep talking a little bit yeah. along the tabletop RPG side. It's, oh, because it kind of fits yeah. what you're... So, uh, sometimes I'll, like, just to kind of see, like, how things will translate or, like, certain... Like, what is the overall goal here <laughs> for a character? I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, if a character has this goal and I apply it in this type of setting, I'll see how that works out. Uh, for example, uh, Kyari's game. I've made a, got a character there called Hermos. Hermos is... <laughs> Hermos is a Dark Souls character, but he's set in, like, a Fallout post-apocalypse type world. Got it. <laughs> so that <laughs> definitely creates a very different yeah. tone. Uh, we, me and Kyari also discussed this, like... Because of how, essentially, I was like, Hermos is, like, a dampier, he's an elf, and we had a discussion about, like, how aging would work for him, and we were like, okay, he's either going to live as long as, like, a regular elf, which is, like, a thousand years, uh, or he's going to live as long as a dampier, because it's Pathfinder 2, second edition. Oh, okay. And as we were discussing this, I'm like, well, in... <laughs> Kiari was running the numbers, and he's like, well, he's either go. we can either have him live a thousand years, or we can have him live up to four thousand years. Oh. And I'm like, that's a long time. And he goes, yeah, it is. So that's probably, like, probably somewhere in the middle is where y'all ended up, probably. He's, <laughs> I think at the time we were like, yeah, but it's a lot more... A little bit funny if we allow him to, like, live before that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
because it's like I don't know what you do with a character that somehow manages to live that long ironically first to die and then get better uh but another more like character moment thing happened recently where uh essentially it was a save the citizen type deal from like sky high yeah except yeah, it yeah. was a lot worse uh it's like get the citizen i think out. we've talked about this before. yeah at least maybe we did i don't we remember we did we didn't talk about it on uh okay recording though yeah uh and so we're trying like all of our characters are like go and help help citizens like because that's kind of what you expect your people to do yeah. and kiari's like you know you guys can just do nothing and just observe because like these are mushroom people things are predetermined for them right okay and we decided no we're gonna help them and so certain ones were like ah we're not fuck you for helping me because you're a snake man <laughs> that's like what sarah's character is going through uh lily another character is like you know, I know this painting is really beautiful, but you should get out of here before you're burned, like, alive. Meanwhile, Hermos is like, hey, I understand you're having, a, like, a really bad time considering your family just melted, like, right there. Yeah, just right over there. <laughs> yeah, because, <laughs> like, that was why this poor uh, guy was freezing up. Mm -hmm. Hermos is like, alright, man, look, I understand that they're dead. You can't really do anything about that. Get going. And through diplomacy and, like, kind of talking him up, like, alright, cool, there's a ladder, get up, get out of here. Uh, and <laughs> Lily, in her frustration with the painter, <laughs> goes and takes the painting and just fucking throws it <laughs> into, like, the lava. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, this painter is a little bit too obsessed with his paintings, and so he dove in after and oh. died. Meanwhile, Sasaki having this argument with this uh, monkey man who's just being the worst eventually got, like, knocked out by the lava and, like, scarred up a bit but still alive and Sasaki's like, fuck you for making me be a good person. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, John's character is going around and putting out, like, not putting out fires because he can't really do that with how lava kind of yeah, works. Yeah, yeah magma lava it's a little who it's cares little, about the distinction yeah it's it, but I'm either like, way you can't really put out yeah i mean you you, you would, can avert it and slow it down for a you bit. would need a lot yeah. of water to actually like stop the lava but we're like okay that's what uh iris that character is doing uh meanwhile <laughs> and so lily's like ah damn it well that guy's dead and i don't feel good about that meanwhile uh, Iris and Suzaki. Iris has moved on to help another guy, and it's like, oh, my pride is wounded, blah, 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 and Iris is like, who cares, man? Run! Yeah. Meanwhile, we've got another guy who's like, now is a perfect time to loot. <laughs> and Hermos is like, D people care about you, idiot. <laughs> and he's like, I don't care. I need my money. And Hermos is like, alright, fuck this. I'm just gonna beat your ass and drag you to safety. And so Lily's like, wait, no, no, wait. I can just knock him, I can just shove him off and then we can drag him. Uh, that didn't work because of magic. And he passed, and just essentially. How, yeah. yeah, and so he was like, actually, I'm gonna knock Lily out. Because <laughs> her Hermos is like, I'm just gonna climb up there and get to him. Whereas Lily's like, actively removing him immediately. Mm -hmm. and Hermos is like hmm guy I don't know and is like actively about to die and get himself killed or the person I do know and actually care about yeah I'm gonna help the person I do know and actually care about and he's like he's like oh shit this guy's pretty strong and he's like actually you should help me and Hermos just goes because he's like passing and this is another time where sometimes I'm like sometimes the roles will help di dictate role play type thing. Yep. Hermos passes the like saving throw on being charmed and is like, "Nah, man, I'm good. Uh, maybe some other time." <laughs> this is fun. 
<laughs> and so Hermos get, I have Hermos get Lily out of there. And this man is immediately killed the next turn. <laughs> because it's like, well, I tried to save him. He didn't want to be saved. Yeah. And so all of the party, safe. Some people weren't as happy with our help. But hey, we did it. We did a good thing. Yeah. There you go. Anyhow, what about you, man? Like I said, just been working on the D&D stuff, and then, you know. I'm still waiting for that Elden Ring DLC. But I am getting better. I'm knocking the rust off. Yeah. Um, I also know where, like, the entrance to it is. I just have to go and kill the guy that's guarding it. He's tough. Yeah. I think I'm actually going to go ahead and just have us go to the next segment mm. today. Uh, it's going to be kind of shorter episode. Yeah. Um, you were telling me there wasn't a bunch of news. Yeah, there's there. no there's no real news, so we're just going to jump into our main topic today, which is the Star Wars Visions uh, one-shot from Takashi Akazaki, which they did give yes. a title to. Of, uh, uh, it's the Ronin and the Droid, although it's not marketed that way. It's still marketed as Star Wars Visions mm. number one, Takashi Akazaki, or Takashi Akazaki number one, sorry. So um, it's still marketed that way. So we're going to just refer to it as that for now. Uh, spoiler warning, we're going to go into it. So uh, at the end of the day, if you like the Star Wars Vision stuff, check it out. That that, mm -hmm. that that That's the main takeaway if you're trying to get spoiler-free thoughts on it. Um, as for spoiler thoughts, they start off with a Hidden Fortress slash Star Wars reference. Because yep. Star Wars is just, it's Hidden Fortress. So, mm. so yeah, we're circling back. <laughs> we're circling back. <laughs> Which makes sense, because, like, the setting, you know, Hidden Fortress is that, mm. you know, samurai ronin type story. And then we got the ronin from Visions. And so you, we start off with these two droid. Well, one's a droid for sure. I, I, I couldn't tell if the other guy was a I, guy in a mask or not. Yeah. I don't know if you're a droid or not. because It's a really that, cool design. It is. I think... He is supposed to be. I one. think he's supposed to be a droid as well. It's the eye thing that, like, yeah. When we get the close, because we get a close up and we see like this eye, but it does look almost like a. I'll just like a synthetic. Yeah, I'll just show the audience. Let's see. Since I've got it pulled up, so like, there's that really close up of the eye in that fourth frame or uh, third frame, and so like it, it kind of has a droid look to it, but it also could just be an eye mm. so it's really hard to tell it's a but it's a really cool design either way yeah um and so anyways we start with them as kind of like the bookends they're they're at the beginning they're at the end they're not important to the story also important thing this story is not told in chronological order yeah it's kind of all over the place yeah. it's mostly within like like a, i understood it's the mostly story within the like time. a year span i feel yeah. like there's a 10 year gap oh 10 year okay yeah Oh yeah, because it's it's a little bit bigger than that. Yeah, because a lot of people die off mm -hmm. in between the in between the time jumps. But to tell it semi chronologically, we're focusing on the life of this one Sith, who yeah. kind who was the owner of the droid that Ronan eventually gets. Mm -hmm. um, I wish I remembered the droid's name because it has a name, yeah. but I don't remember what it is. And they don't say it in this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so he was the owner of the droid before Ronin, and so this is, once again, we're going further back in the Ronin mm. timeline. We, I will Because we keep like, going back. We keep going backwards. Yeah. Because we, well, I'd say the one time we go forwards is the book. Yeah. But and that's cool. Yeah. I like that book. I still like it to this day. Yeah. The book, I mean, from what I understand, it's still, like, in your top five. Yeah. Top five of Star Wars. And so, like, we, we basically go from the short... And then we get a little bit before the short, and then the rest is after the short for the novel. Yep. Uh, with, with the short being adapted into the novel as well, with its own like interpretation of certain mm -hmm. things that we did not know at the time were going on in the short, because it wasn't important to the short, but it was important to the novel. Um, and then we go backwards with the last Visions one-shot we got for Ronin, because we had a Visions Ronin one-shot yep. already. And that was going backwards to when... He was still to his earlier times of hunting Sith down after the mm -hmm. Jedi Sith War, um, this or the Sith Rebellion they call it in the written yeah. timeline, and then which by the way like because 
Sith stuff, like, in Star Wars, I think Ronan has one of the best reasons for, like, being like, no. Not that he's... This. Not that what he's he did... He's, he's not a good guy He's not a good that. guy. But, like, I understand the reasoning, because sometimes... <laughs> I've it's, just, it's I, a, I just felt we should clarify, because, like, yes, yeah. his reasoning makes the most sense, but that doesn't make that him doesn't a good guy. That doesn't make him a good guy. <laughs> And like, he's and he's redeeming himself through action. I think is important. Yeah. Throughout the rest of like, after the Re- Sith Rebellion, the rest of his actions are him trying to redeem himself through his actions. Yeah. It's one of the benefits of him being like, now nah, as a matter of fact, fuck dialogue. Which not a lot of like, most of the time in Star Wars when we get redemption, it's not through action. Yeah. It's either through inaction, or through like one epic moment. Mm-hmm. In the case of Vader. And then that they die, yep. like Vader and Kylo just basically get one epic moment that proves their redemption, and then that's it. Yeah, and and that that's, that's not really and that's that's not a it's a form of redemption, but it's not the strongest form. Oh, okay. I was about to hit it with an entirely different. Were you uh, gonna say it's not even redemption? No, not that. <laughs> I was going to say I think it's a case of media, in which case, like with comics and books, you can do like a more overarching thing and tv opposed, shows i guess yeah and like because like zuko is prime example mm. from avatar last airbender prime example of how to do a redemption arc yeah he he goes through the actions of proving his redemption not just going i'm good now <laughs> yeah but also like <laughs> movies are different yeah. they they don't have as much time I think, though, the argument against that is when you have multiple films in a, in a mm-hmm. franchise, you do have that ability, but they just don't always do it. Yeah. Um, uh, but, like, Ronan's, like, initial motivation for being, like, fuck this. Now, initially, his redemption is selfish. It yes. is not It is not him actually trying to do good. It's just him mad about the situations regarding certain mm-hmm. things. And then eventually, as the novel goes on... He it does become a selfless thing, over time, and it and it is him trying to make right for the things of his past. Mm. And that, if you want our full thoughts on that, watch our review of the Visions novel, which is one of the first episodes of this ver- of season two. Mm. So and it's a good episode, I think. Him talking with a traveler. Traveler is a very good one like them talking it's like i know you're fucking cheating i just can't prove it yet uh who are you thinking of though specifically uh the last comic that we got for oh the, okay so the the when the, he's the, talking, sith, the sith and that or the jedi that was a jedi, the jedi that one. yeah and he's talking to him he's like the jedi is like yeah i got struck by lightning and saw some crazy shit that one is also very good because uh, it's just him talking with them and they leave. And from what I understand, and this has to be, and it, that has to be after this one, yeah. because he already has the droid uh, mm-hmm. by that point, and they go to the little spa yeah. and talk to the Jedi there. Um, but in this one, uh, let's go back to this yeah. one. We we so we follow this Sith's life, uh, who's like a Sith master. Uh, we learn that he like mastered a specific type of combat based on what Ronan mentions. He's a sword saint one of the four yeah which i'm like oh shit this guy is the real deal because that's not the first time i've heard that term yeah at like, least it's the first in star wars but not the first in, yeah like i it's like a yeah it's one of those things where it's like oh being called a kensei is like it's a it's a it's you're the real deal yeah like almost on a spiritual level when it comes to mastery and so yeah, so this guy, yeah, he's the real deal. But he's also kind of been out of it. He's been out of it. Because he, because like, I assume, yeah. like, because once again, I'm assuming this is like at least a year or two after the, or at least the ten years ago. That's like a year or two after the the Sith War, mm. the Sith Rebellion, because like, he retires from the Sith. He's in hiding, hanging out with this village where he kind of forms a community with them. Yeah, and so he like. Uh, and even wants to be like, and we go through the ten years, and we see the the community slowly die off because yeah. it's a small village. It's a small village, and also this place is very polluted. And so, he basically tells the droid, "Hey, when I die, I want to be buried with everybody else. Mm. If, if give me a proper burial, yeah. Since you'll be the one that will probably be doing it because you're yeah. a droid, you'll li- you'll outlive me. On the other hand, though, he's starting to have visions." 
But no, he's actually having like for, for stream visions, and he's, uh, I guess he's seen the Ronin multiple times in his dreams. Hmm. Most of the time, though, they are darker dreams. But in this last one that he has, which is like a day before the the present day yeah. events of the comic, like a week or like. I, I, I imagined it was a day, because when we do the flat, like, whenever we go back, we, we go back to, like, one point that's immediately after he tells the droid about it, and it's... Oh, yeah. And it's, like, yeah, no, just before the act, fight. Just before the fight, he's explaining, like, oh, yeah, droids can't dream. You don't know what that is. I'd have to explain that. Yeah, so I think it's, like, the day. That would make more sense. Yeah, because he shows up and challenges him to a fight. Yeah, so it's got to be the day before the fight that he, yeah. or the night before the fight that he has that vision, and because of just the way that the story is told, it, mm. it it makes sense that it has to be then because like he tells the droid about it, and then they he uh, tell um, tries to explain what dreams are, and then we cut away yep. to the present day where they're fighting, and then we cut back to the then where no he doesn't explain dreams. It's the when we cut back yeah. that he explains dreams. And then he, and that's also when we see Ronan show up and be like, I challenge you to fight. Yep. And so it has to be that day that like, that's why I was like, eh, that, that, that time gap is a little bit smaller as we get further into the story. Mm. Um, so, um, but yeah, so they fight and, um, and uh, immediately our, our, our Sith master recognizes Ronan from the visions. Mm. And so he's like, oh, okay. And also a little cute thing is the droid's hat. We know where it comes from now. Mm -hmm. It's from the Sith Master. It's from his previous owner. Yep. So that's why he has the little straw hat. <laughs> and so, um, which I think is a cute little thing. Yes. That, like, it's not a nest. I actually no, it is a necessary thing because it shows care. Like, because Ronan gives it to him. Because uh, after after he beats the the master in a fight, which is a mm. tough fight, by the it is way, is a tough fight. Like <laughs> once again, Ronan almost always on the back foot in these fights. Like I really like how uh... <laughs> I like how initially he's fucking with Ronan. Yeah, and then he's like <laughs> he throws him in a river. <laughs> like Ronan manages. Oh, also, I like how uh, Okina our sith master yeah is like you know could we not like fight here in the middle of the cemetery that would be crazy disrespectful and ronan goes i don't care they're already dead <laughs> we're gonna fight now yeah and so they um but like, it doesn't matter anyways because the fight does take does move elsewhere because yeah. they get thrown off the cliff uh well they jump off well, they get thrown off only to jump and land, and then yeah. Ronan jumps off, and then they, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, but initially, Aquino's not even using his lightsaber. Yeah. He's just like, yeah, you're not doing so good. He's just like, like you've hey, killed a lot of people. Don't know why you're doing so badly don't know, now. Don't know why you're sucking now. <laughs> He's like, ah, I'll just. Get... Ronan's just like, get out your lightsaber, damn it. He's like, I don't need to. It's like I'll just wait until the perfect moment. To and then he strike. does. Just, ah, there we go. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, like just as like Ronan's about to come down on top of him, he's just like, oh yeah. Yep. And I'm <laughs> like, that is an excellent use of force push. I never considered just throwing someone into a river. Yep. Like even though that's something you can easily do. I actually really like Aquino's lightsaber design. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like I like the hilt. It I like it it's so much. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll show that one off to the audience. We'll get a close up of it so that way we can like really see it. There we go. Oh, nope. Sorry. There we go. Look how nice it yeah, is. Yeah, it's on the third panel. Yeah, it's that third panel. Yeah, I really like that design of the hilt. It's a really nice hilt. Mm. Um... But yeah, so they, they, yeah, they fight in the river. That, right there, I'm like that. The the that. Yeah, that, because that's all Okina. So the bottom panel where he's just, <laughs> and Ronan's like backing away. He's like, "What the fuck is that?" 
once again him back always on the back pedal mm. um but eventually he got he does get the last second yeah. upper hand when they like I do really... the the typical samurai mm-hmm. did he kill I, him i do like what ronin does to like help himself out mm-hmm. he uses oh yeah so he uses the water heat, yeah right he uses he the... uses it to create steam yeah he uses the fact that the lightsaber in the water steam yep I also liked seeing for a split second the uh, Aquino's face just for a split second. You don't mm-hmm. you don't get a really good look at it, even with even with the fact that it's art. Like you can look at it and still not really get the best look at it. Like yeah. I can tell he's a Zabrik and that's about it. And he's much older. Like you can tell he's much older. Yeah, I'm like, man, it's a good thing you're fighting him. Like after being poisoned with pollution and ten years. 10 to 12 years after the war because i don't think you'd have had a chance if he was any younger oh you do get a sick. you did get a better look on some of the other panels afterwards yeah. but i like the seeing the the, the mask split mm-hmm. from the lightsaber cut um but ronan does give him a proper funeral uh and uh then gives uh the droid the hat which mm-hmm. Because he had the hat at the time, so he gives him the straw hat of his of Aquinos, which I think shows. Because while you could go, oh, it's cheap that they you know had to explain where the droid got the hat from. No, that's not what they're doing at all with that scene. They're they're it's deeper than that. It's them showing that Ronan kind of does care. Yeah, like don't get me wrong, he did show up here to kill a guy, but he's like, I didn't come here to like disrespect him. Yeah. Because, um, even, like, because once again, the, Okino tells the droid, go with him, he'll take care of you. Yeah. And that's exactly what Ronan does <laughs> from there on out. Mm. And gets him a new leg and everything, because he yeah. still has that bad leg at the end of the comic. Yeah, and also, like, I do like because o- Okina, yeah. like, before the fight, acknowledges, like, alright, go with him after all this happens. This is what Sith do. This is how things go. And also, you'll be happy. Mm-hmm. He's like, I can't... This is the kind of life I lead. It's hard to get out once you're in it, and I've been in it so long that the only option... Is death. Is death. It's a very beautiful comic. And and while it's... You know, they continue to do the thing Ronin comics and the short do, which is that classic samurai black and white... With the red showing up for the lightsabers, I think it's it's just so beautiful. Mm. The, everything about it, the comic, the art, the the story, uh, and then it ends with the the, the our our hidden fortress trope, uh, hidden fortress references still arguing as they as it's nighttime now. And whenever we get where we're going, I'm never going on another adventure again. <laughs> yeah, and so I. I like it. It's a it's yeah. a nine. I'm pretty confident in that. It's a nine. I'll give it a nine and a half. <laughs> you just love Ronin verse that much. I just love it that much. <laughs> if you could, you would. You, they would just get their own continuity. Like, I fucking wish that like, would be great. Just like the Legends continuity, just give a Ronin continuity. That's just keep publishing le- like Ronin stuff. <laughs> I'm very. Happy. It seems they they are. It seems they are dedicated yeah. to publishing Vision stuff, whether that's Ronin or not. And so I do, I do like that they, outside of the show, they are continuously adding to the Vision's name. Uh, and so I guess this is the Vision. Like, it's not, Ronan's not getting its own, mm-hmm. like, you, like, t- yeah. like it's not getting a Legends con- le- a, It's not going as far as that. Yeah. But I'd say Visions as, as a brand is mm-hmm. the Legends brand. So, like, Visions has its own brand. Because it's neither Legends nor, nor Canon. It is just Visions. Um, because while it does, while it's not canon material, it is not Legends material either, because Legends is kind of its own timeline, and so, and Visions doesn't fit that either, Mm -hmm. so, Visions is just Visions, (laughs) and so, I, I like that they are showing that initiative to just keep telling new stuff. What I'm not a fan of is the, 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 like, I, I was interested in the Visions manga until I learned it's just them adapting the... The, the, sh- the shorts, shorts which i mean i get it that that's a good way to get it to a wider like to a different audience mm-hmm. 
I shouldn't say wider, because I'd say that's actually a smaller niche audience. But it is a way to get it to a different audience, so that is nice on that regard. But I would have been interested in a manga that was telling new stories and, you know, kind of like what we're getting with the one-shots. Mm. And so... Because I'm not really a fan of the adaptation comics. It's why we don't really talk about them on the show. Like, th there's been ones for pretty much every live-action mm -hmm. show. Like, The Mandalorian Seasons 1 and 2 had theirs. And then Obi-Wan just finished theirs. I, I'm, I know what it is. It's also an even shorter format. Yeah. I was going to say, it's the reason why I will... I like, I'm okay with the movies and stuff like that. But you don't need to explain everything, like, if you have the movies. So, to me, like, if you made, say, like, while novelizations of the movies are nice... Well, we'll, not... we'll go over those, because that adds more detail for yeah. me. But what I'm going to say is, they're one of the things that, while nice, is not required. Yeah. It's, but in, like, shows and such are, like, I understand why you would do this. But also, it's like, do you really need it? I, thing that we've already seen i actually disagree i don't know why they do it for the com doing a tv adaptation to comics like the other like they're doing or sorry comic adaptation of a tv show mm. like they're doing the reverse where they're because a novelization at least adds more details and more things yeah to the the story and for a lot of those adds a lot of stuff that like if on a first viewing you might not have gotten on a second viewing you might have gotten but then the book adds even more details to mm -hmm. that to where you can now 100% confirm that stuff that you might not have noticed the first time. I think the Whereas a comic... Comics and television shows, they're both highly... Not to imply that the dialogue is minimal in comics, but they're both very highly visual mediums. Well, well, here's the thing, though, is... they The, the thing about the comics, like the comic adaptations mm -hmm. of TV shows, is they are mini series runs mm. and they usually only run about six issues that's not a lot of time in comic book yeah no it's pretty much over it's pretty much an it's pretty much an episode of a tv show mm. i'd say like six comics equals like an epi like may maybe a couple episodes of a tv show but like it's one of those things where it doesn't always translate well and so like that means cutting things right yeah. and so it's also a reason why we're not going to do the Thrawn comic adaptations. Because while we've talked about them coming out, we're not going to read those comics. We're going to read the novels. Because right. <laughs> why would I go from the thing that has more information to the thing that has less information? <laughs> right? Like, I like, the, I like the pretty pictures, and I'm glad that we're getting visualizations of certain characters in certain moments. I like the pretty pictures, said the filmmaker. Put that on your resume. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I should. That was... I think that's the most disrespectful thing. No, I've ever no, done. no. It's not. It's funny. Um. So like, <laughs> like I like that they're visualizing certain mm -hmm. moments from the novels, but they're also leaving out so much. Like I read the first Thrawn novel adaptation because. The, so they did an adaptation of the first of the Thrawn trilogy, the Imperial trilogy is what people have called it, because uh, it's the Rebels era mm -hmm. Thrawn, so it's the story of him rising up the ranks in the Empire, right? Um, so they did an adaptation of the first book, and then now we're getting the adaptation of Alliances, which is the second book in that trilogy. They're cutting out so much, even in that first book. Because I read that right. comic when the first where, one came where out. Where are we like looking at? Is it like a forty to sixty percent? Let me let me just pull her up. It is a bunch of them on the shelf back there. That's why. I actually don't have the comic at the moment. Hmm. Uh, but this is the novel. Mm -hmm. Comic is probably about that length in a trade paperback <laughs> if we're being if we're being honest because it's a six issue mm. like this is in paperback cutting out any of the like excerpts from future books and stuff that were at the time it's 470 pages 
no trade paperback for a six issue comic series is that much mm. and they cut out a lot they i mean they got like the major points right but a lot of the stuff of like character development and investigation into the main storyline, which is them hunting down this guy, uh, and we'll we'll get to it eventually. Mm. But they're hunting down this one guy, this one like rebel terrorist mm. member, and so like you miss a lot of the investigation that gets to the answers of how they hunt this guy down, and so they kind of just skip some of the stuff. Them they they oh, okay, I get it. you're mad that they're speed running it. Yes, yes. Because why? What's the point? They wanted to make pretty pictures, Caleb. <laughs> and I'm fine. Sorry. And I'm fine with getting to see these major points, mm. but at that point, just just release cool concept art. <laughs> it's why. It's also why I prefer when a book is mm. getting adapted to to some other media. I prefer television show over movie. Okay, yeah, I can see that. Because otherwise, we've seen that now the best versions of movie adaptations of books is when they're two-parters. Mm. Right? Like, the best movie adaptations of books have been multiple-part films. I'd say... The exception is Lord of the Rings, where yeah, it's a trilogy of films, but they're it's a trilogy of books, so it's mm. one, one, one. Like they're adapting one book three with three different. Uh, and then The Hobbit is also the exception on the opposite end, where we see like spreading out a book across three movies. Probably not the best. I would have said two movies would have actually worked for The Hobbit. I, I which was the original plan for that film. I think two movies is actually the best option mm. for The Hobbit. Because a lot of the, I I see where they could have cut certain things out and where it would have, so like, but I also get what I actually like the Hobbit tr trilogy still. This is somebody who likes those films still, saying that there are problems with with that adapt with that adaptation of the story, um, and I see what they were doing. They were trying to add more Cimmerillion stuff to mm. kind of link that to Lord of the Rings m more properly. Because the Hob the Hobbit you can almost read as its own material separate from yeah. Lord of the Rings. Uh, because it's a very different tone. Both of these are books that I have read. Yeah, because... Only one of which have I seen the trilogy for. Yeah, because The Hobbit is more of a fun children's book, right? Mm -hmm. Lord of the Rings, while that still a kid... Up. While still a kid's book, is more adult. Mm -hmm. As you, like, it's it's a lot more adult. It, it, at least the audience. that mm -hmm. I The target audience, I'd say, is for an older target. Uh. Whereas, I'd say The Hobbit, you could read at, like, 12, 13, like, probably even younger. Oh, man. I'm probably gonna eight, you, eight. I'm going to tell you this. I didn't read it in that order. Oh, and The Hobbit came out first, too, so. Yeah, well, I'm not Fuck. <laughs> what, you read Lord of the Rings first? I read Lord of the Rings first, and I was, uh, I was like, 11 or 12. Lord of the Rings is great, mm. but it should not be your introduction to fantasy reading, I feel like, because it is. Oh, it uh, is. No, a, it was not. Okay, good. Because it is... Whoo, boy, does it... Uh, uh, that one... It's a meaty book series. Oh, yeah. Uh, for me, it was a series called... There were two at the time. Uh, one... Like, of course, Harry Potter was one. Fablehaven was the other. Yeah, I haven't heard the other one. Uh, it's a good series. But it, it's also one, like, where it's like... Here is the problem. Yeah. This is an adult problem. These are children handling an adult problem in a setting where magic is very, very dangerous. But also, it's like, I'm like, you're not going to kill off one of your main characters. Yeah. And while there, so going, I mean, and while there's a lot of problems with JK and Harry mm -hmm. Potter now, now that we've grown up and can look back on things and realize certain things, mm -hmm. right? I think one of the strong points in terms of, like, for our demographic growing up and why it kind of mm. worked is that the books didn't start lord of the ring size they no, got they there did. eventually they got there it took about i'd say about uh, it was about four <laughs> it was about four where they were like all right because i'd say god i'd say goblet is where it gets mm. denser yeah um i remember trying to i did have the paperbacks yeah i remember trying to start like the, i had up to six yeah right 
I remember like the first five movies were out. And so I, I had watched them and gotten into it. And so I tried to read my first of the reading of them mm-hmm. was honestly the worst one to start with. The Half-Blood Prince. Which, you started at six? Because I had watched the first five movies. So I figured, oh, I could Why just jump into six. Because I had watched the first five. So I figured I could just jump into six. Um, yeah, no, it's a thick monster. And I was not ready for that. I remember checking it out at my school's library. Mm-hmm. Boom. It was the hardcover, so it was like that. <laughs> it's a thick boy. Yeah. Um, I was not prepared. And so, like, and this is, like, coming from somebody who liked to read a lot. Mm. Like, I read a lot of Star Wars books as they came out at the time. Like, I was a Republic Commando guy until we learned about Karen Travis as well. Uh <laughs> also got problems um and so like i and so i you know i I read a lot of books it's just i was not ready for that level at the time because i didn't take the baby steps up because like sorcerer stone aka philosopher stone is like it's a little less than about it's a little over half what thrawn is is a hundred and like 30 something pages well, reason... I meant in thickness. Like, when you look at it, you'll probably see it about that. Yeah. The reason I remember that is because I read it in, like, a night. But then again, I was a child that didn't have anything to do the next day. So, I think that is one of the good things about that mm. series is that they were... It increases it... over time. With its audience where it's like, okay, we start you young as a fantasy reader. So, we're going to start smaller and scale, in both in scope and in yeah. book size. And then we're going to increase as the story goes on that's probably one of the better parts of that if i'm gonna give credit to anything she ever (laughs) so but um but going back to star wars um yeah so uh nine and nine and nine and a half uh Mm. for for ronin um i think that's it for the main topic of what we wanted to discuss um so reminder we are skipping a week, yes. Because uh, he has to. He, he we need a break. That, is yeah, what it comes down that's to. That's the truth of it. It isn't that I like suddenly said. It's not that we I hate have an Star- immense dislike of Star Wars now. It's a case of, well, I applaud Caleb's enthusiasm for it. <laughs> I can hear you gritting. <laughs> and I do like it. I need to take. Essentially, I'm going. Not we need a quite break. Clean. We need a break. Yeah, we just need a break. And the and in, in, my, in our defense, all right. If anyone comes at us for this, uh, fuck you. We've done this for four years, with pretty much very minimal stop yeah. breaks. Like we've taken breaks for holidays, and that's about I it. I think that's it. I'm not entirely sure that we didn't pre-record for those. I think we did. for some we might <laughs> have pre-recorded. Um. But, like, we've done this for almost, like, four years consistently now. Me saying I need a break after that, I think, is, like, fairly reasonable. Yeah. Don't argue with me on this. And so, Sorry, like, that's very accusatory. No, no, no. I don't think... I think they'll understand because our, audi- our audience yeah. tends to be... I mean, especially because we've talked about it before, like, last week. We, we were like... Yeah, if we and honestly, that was when you were like, "Hey, by the way," uh, but like last week, we said like, if it ever stops being fun for us, then we'll stop. And mm-hmm. so, since it's not not fun for us, it's just we need a break so that way it stays fun. Mm-hmm. Because if we we don't want to burn out, I also the burnout is real. I also don't want it to feel like a chore mm-hmm. because once things starts feeling like chores, I stop doing them. Yeah, and so like burnout's real it's real and so we're trying to avoid we're trying to avoid it before it yeah we're trying to avoid it before it happens and so and the best way to do that is just proactively go okay we need a break and it's only for a week yeah we're not we're not taking like a month like i'm not we're not gonna do the we're not gonna take my whole three months that i'm gonna be busy to take the break uh we're just taking do something else i guess yeah we're just gonna take oh a week and uh but that means for you guys on the good end we're coming back with a double feature because mm-hmm. uh, two things are coming out, so at the same time. So we, we I figured, and one of them's a comic, 
and then the other is a novel. So mm. it'll give us time to read both. Yep. And so, in fact, the comic's already out. I sent it to him already. So he can read it on his own time whenever he feels like. Yep. And then when the book comes out, I'll do the same thing. I'll just send it to you as soon as it comes out. Mm. And um, You do a lot of, I will admit, you do a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to this podcast. Because I'm not familiar with tech or how that works you send me like the materials however this is very much like a it's the it's the reading and scheduling your reading and yeah. all that yeah because that can still be uh, they can still be draining because especially if it's starting to feel like work and not entertainment mm -hmm. and i think while it is entertaining for us to read these things if we just keep doing this it's going to become work yep. um and so and also, sometimes, like, my reading method for it is not the best because of how it's, It like, basically leaves you with a day left after reading to not mm -hmm. read. If then. Because sometimes it'll be like, oh, I didn't read any today because things got And busy. so now you got a double. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, that's fine when it's, like, 50 or 60 pages. But, but if when it, it gets to, like, 200 yeah then so, things become a problem yeah so long story short just gonna take a little break and honestly we suggest y'all take care of yourselves too like don't i mean anything because it yeah. doesn't have to be entertainment that you can get burnt out on you could get burnt out on your day job so like just take care of yourselves i, I think that's the important mm -hmm. message here is taking care of your health mental and health and physical mental and physical it's connected if your mental health isn't great your physical health won't be um but the good news is like i said two things in two mm -hmm. weeks so when we do come back we are going to be talking about the high republic adventures crash landing one shot that just came out uh and we'll be talking about the living force novel that we've been hyped up about mm -hmm. and so or as i am deciding to call it now the council's grand tour <laughs> the council's grand tour i'm excited because it's it's john jackson miller coming back to star wars i like his stuff he's my kotor comic boy he is my uh he, he wrote the kenobi book that everybody likes that's legends he wrote the um first canon novel he wrote a new dawn which we haven't talked about yet because that's further on the timeline um that's a next season i think thing all right um it's about Kanan and Hera and how they meet and all that. Okay. And it's it's basically the Rebels prequel. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so yeah, so living so th look forward to those when we come yeah. back. Um, thank you everybody for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you're uh, since you're watching on YouTube since we didn't do a live stream today. Mm -hmm. um, be sure to check out the Patreon, which is linked down below, where you can watch our content before it's released publicly on YouTube. Uh, in fact, since we're pre-recording this, I'll probably put mm -hmm. it on the Patreon. So that's a good way, I guess, for even the podcast, since we're going to be soon pre-recording all those. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you want to watch the podcast early, once we start doing that, there's a way to do it. Um, and so shout out to our current Patreon member, Jennifer Brantley. Thank you. And, uh, I think that's every oh you can find you can also find me on twitch and kick at escape reality films as well as tiktok at the same link facebook and instagram at caleb.lockwood and i think that oh and no yeah facebook instagram and threads caleb.lockwood and then twitter at escape reality 94 mm. there we go i did it <laughs> i don't have the script up so i'm having to <laughs> memories <laughs> um Speaking of D&D &D stuff, though, since we talked about that earlier, yep. speaking of the game that you... Well, one of the games you brought up, because you didn't... I think you brought up one of them. I brought up one of them. I brought up Chiari's, okay. not Keontes. Oh, okay. Every Sunday from 5 to 7 Central Standard Time, you can catch some friends of ours over at Trials of Nebu on YouTube at the Steam Dungeon. Uh, so I listen, I wasn't able to make it the last week's because I had work. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say it. Underground team, not doing so good. They're out of they're they're doing their best, but they got a bunch of nat ones last session. <laughs> it is becoming a comedy of errors mixed with an actual threat. Fun. 
Mm-hmm. All right. Well, once again, uh, that's Trials of Steam Dungeon. Dungeon. Steam, Trials of Dungeon. Yeah, Steam Dungeon. Five so to seven Central Standard Time on YouTube. YouTube.com, Steam Dungeon, and then Trials of Nebu is the show. Hmm. And then at Sundays at 7 p.m. Central, right? 5 to 7. 5 to 7, sorry. 5 to 7 Central. Thank you. Uh, 5 to 7 p.m. Central Standard. Um, uh, and that's usually when you're live, but the VODs stay hmm. up there on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. VODs are always there. So if you ever need to catch up or you miss an episode, mm-hmm. that's how you do or so. Or if you're like me and occasionally use them for notes for when you're not there. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's everything. So we'll see you all in two weeks after we get a little breather. Once again, y'all take care of yourselves as well. And uh, I have spoken. Have a good one.